Come on, cars. Nobody wants to play. Play with me, play. So as it's tradition, and for you to practice and not get rusty, we're going yet again to create another wiring harness. Here are the plugs that go, this one goes into the master radar, and this one go, goes into the slave unit. What I've done is basically pin the colors from one side to the other. Check out the wire diagram and make sure that you pin the colors to the right spots and then we'll go to the car, put the entire wiring in. So we have started as usual with our tape and we are almost halfway through. Yeah, almost there. I'm thinking another 30 minutes of doing that and then finally. Okay, so here's our harness. This is the master side. So it has all the plugs there with their colors and we have the slave. So this is all wrapped now in one independent loom that we can just put it following the routing of the other ones. And then this four wires that are left will go inside the main cabin following the, uh, the boot that goes from the outside into the trunk. All right, so here we go. Slave sensor mounted, we're gonna pass it through this point all the way and finally when they reach the master radar and from here we'll go inside All right, so it's black now. We routed the cable on top of the radar. There are like, you, you will see like there are guides actually that follow this thing and there are like clips that you can attach the cable to. It goes all the way across to the other side. And then we just follow the same path that we did on the other side. So underneath here, then go up on this, uh, connector here went over the radar over here and then we have just a little bit of slack so yeah that was that was good that was the easy part now let's get it inside the car uh, one day i'll be able to afford a lift in a garage instead of working like a second class citizen <laughs> Yeah, I cannot repeat this enough, but if you're not losing your number 10 socket, you're not doing this right. As you remember from our pretty previous video when we replaced this trim, we need to push these tabs here. Don't just pull it out because you're gonna break it. Once again, don't ask me how I know. All right. Here we go. We need to pass these four cables into the main cabin. We're gonna try to follow the same path that we use for the um, PDC, or sorry, the PMA new wires. Cause I made a, a hole big enough at the time to make sure that I have room to pass these new cables. So what we're gonna do is the same thing here. We're gonna just attach it to this existing loom and just reuse everything that we can. I don't even have to remove this. Just have to squeeze them and pull. And also break them. Yeah, no, oh, didn't really break, but uh, not too bad.
Oh, this is kind of quick for once. I wish it could be like this all the time. <clears throat> all right, we'll leave it to, up to there and then we're gonna start passing our cables. Let's go with the ground, which is the longest one. And probably it's gonna be the most annoying one. Okay. One is in. Let's play go fish. Brown cable is in, so we are just gonna pull it in. And we'll do the same for the rest. So brown wire following the same path. So it's all pretty and beautiful. I need to talk to the producers of this show. They cannot even provide me with a chair. There we go. Looking beautiful and pretty like it never left the factory like. This was made for tiny hands that smell like cabbage. For sure. We have here our freshly made loom right here that goes up here and then there remember okay so remember one of the wires uh, i believe it's the green and yellow has to come to here underneath to I'll put it there the diagram and the point where it needs to hook up that is the power of the radars the ground i followed this path and it's located right here underneath the post so you'll see it later when I plug it in and then we need to pass the pink and green and white wire so the ground wire is right behind this this bolster on the ground point and the pink and green white wire I passed it all the way there as usual following the same path through the door all the way to there and that's it so this is the ground point for this, the radars Here we just need to find an empty slot, which we do have, and yeah, we're just gonna install it right here. Yep, 
there's one empty there. Perfect. So the other thing we have to do is make this little loop. So it's gonna be one for pink and one for green. So we have to make this loop to close the flex ray on this plug. And as you can see on the diagram, the location of those pins, because we have our pink that comes from the radars and our green one, but we are missing on the other side, the closed loop for the flex ray. So yeah. Okay, and this is what it's gonna look like. Our two loops here, the pink one from 23 to 27 and the green one from 24 to 28. And yeah, that's it. Let's make it, let's put it together and try to test it. Since I'm like a squirrel, I love to collect parts. And as you can see, these ones are the ones that we're gonna stop for the warning, um, for the lane change warning, which is this button that I don't have on the other one. The only difference between these two is this one is the PLCI and this one is the LCI, just for because of the icon. So guess which one I'm gonna use. And done. So this doesn't work or doesn't do anything. Yeah, this one is inactive now. We'll code it and it'll come active. So two things before you start this coding. First of all, we added something to the system called FlexRay and we need to basically join this part of the system that we didn't have before into it. And since we don't have any other options that actually belong to that, we have to create a loop to create, to close that circuit. So here's what we're gonna do. First, we are going to add the option 5AG into the uh, vehicle order or the VO. And then we are going to initialize the flex ray. So first when on ESIS, we are going to see that we don't see the modules, obviously, because the car doesn't know that they exist. They might actually see it, but it's very rare. And then when we go enable the options, we will see it, but not on ESIS, we will see it on ISTA. ISTA will pick it up, but it will see that it's not programmed and we need to code those in again. So uh, don't worry, those errors are totally normal. And then once we initialize the flex rate, we'll be, we will be able to see that in ISIS. So we have to go ISIS, ISTA, ISIS, ISTA. <laughs> That's gonna be the whole thing. Nothing to it. Insert the codes into the VO, initialize the flex rate, inject the CAV, CAFD files into the new radars and then initialize the flex ray again and we're done. So let me show you how I do it now. Okay, so here we are again on ESIS, as I mentioned, we are going to add the option 5AG into the VO, do the usual steps that we do, calculate, see that everything matches, that everything is okay. And we can also double check that the option is actually written on the new VO that we're gonna write to the car. And we can see that it's somewhere, uh, where is it? Where'd it go? Oh, right here. Okay, so now we know that it's here and we can proceed, save, go back to the uh, VCM where we are gonna write this into the car We'll go, we load our file, you know, the usual steps, check again, validate, always validate, it's a good thing to do. Double check again. Yeah, the option is right there. And then, uh, where's the option? Yeah, it's right there. And then we click right FAFP to the car and we can see on the corner that it says FAFP written. So we're good to go. All right, yeah, we reloaded the, the VO. Now we're gonna see, we're gonna try to see if our modules are actually in the car. So for that, we are gonna activate EFA. Uh, we see that it's the right one still. I mean, this might seem overkill, but 
believe me, you want to triple check that things are done correctly because other sometimes it's just frustrating when the things doesn't don't appear. So anyway, we read the VCM and we are going to find our new modules. Or actually, before doing that, let's just code all the others into um, defaults so they pick up the new FA and we know that everything is going to work correctly. Now we go to ISTA and now we see that we have the modules right there, the SWW. However, they are in red because the car can only detect that they are connected, but they're not coded. And if you compare to any other modules that are connected into the flex ray, which is this pink line here, we can see that all of them are responding and some have errors because they are not there. So we're going to initialize it first. So we go to body, central gateway module, initialize flex ray, and we're going to do this. Now, here's the interesting part. Sometimes when you do this, the car might tell you that everything is okay and everything is working, or you might get an error saying that the uh, flex rate could not be initialized for whatever reason. At this point, it doesn't really matter because, well, we are just telling the car that we want to initialize and to pick up whatever things it, it picks up in there. But since I already saw that we have the SWW there, for us, initialized successfully. So this is great news. That's one less thing to worry about. And now the next step is just go back to um, ESIS. So we can just close all this down. Oh, actually, before we close it, let's do a just a vehicle test, just in case. Maybe something cleared up after the initialization. Who knows? These things are sometimes voodoo black magic kind of thing happening here so um and actually it makes sense that now as i'm seeing uh some of the uh flex ray are yellow because it, it's saying that yeah all those all those things that work together with the sww are not working correctly they're receiving an error saying i i see where the module is but i'm not getting any coding from it so that actually makes sense. This, it keeps me a little bit less worried. So I'm gonna just check what all these faults are. And obviously since I unplugged, unplugged the car many times, I completely forgot to clear the fault memory. So we have a ton of errors, but as you can see, if they're existing, it says no. So it's okay, we can clear them out and we'll see what actually comes up after the, the cleaning of the errors and see how each module gets activated one at a time. All right, so errors have cleared and as we see, we have only two errors left is the ICM and the FEM. The FEM is another error that comes from other thing that I have to still fix. It's not related to this. I know what the FEM is, but uh, as you can see here, if you compare with the EPS, for example, you have the codings there that you can see that there's data. In this one, we have nothing. So that's where we go and inject with ESIS. And here we are back in ACES and I see the module right here, HC2. So we see that the module is there and as expected, we have all the all the data for it, except for the say CAFD file that we will have to inject. So for that, we do the usual thing. We go and detect the CAFD for SWE and we, since you may not know what is your eye level, so you go to the VCM and then you read the master and it will show up right here. The one that you want is the I-step current 
in which case I have 20, 0, 3, 5, 30, and that's exactly the closest one, or at least if I have the right one, perfect, but if I don't, I'll just pick up the latest that we have. So the um, modules have been flashed to 2016, but since I have an older version, I can just reuse the latest one and it will just work. If the other thing, if the other way is what you have, you have older version in your modules and your car is in, a, in an earlier version, then you need to flash your car to match the module. So now, as you see, we have the CAFD injected, but it's not coded to our VO. So what we are gonna do is just code it to defaults and this way we are going to have this module working with our code in the car so let's do that this shouldn't take long it should be something like maybe 10 seconds okay maybe 15. just patiently wait for the green thing to go all the way yeah, so far everything is good and that's it we are done okay so we see that it finished without errors. And now just to double check that everything is okay, we're gonna do a uh, read, we're gonna the, read the ECUs. And we see now that it's not longer red, it's black, which means that it's coded and now it's able to communicate with the car as it is intended to. And um, we now are going to back to ISTA so we will do reading again for errors and there we go we have our mod i mean the radars in yellow and we also have the errors well you know these are the ones that normal since uh, it started communicating but it still says that no initialization so we're gonna do that again and we just following a different path here, which is uh, basically the software telling us what, what are the things that we should do. Uh, in this case, I want to test that the connection is right. So I'm gonna do this procedure. So I'm diagnosing that everything is correct. Every module is talking to each other and it tells me that everything is all right. And the only thing left to do is to test, not test, but initialize the actual circuit so uh, I'm gonna close this and we are going to do the next step which is the flex rate initialization what a horrible word and we are going to do that so let's see oh, by the way there's gonna be dings all the time while you do this so don't worry about that it's just completely normal. The thing is like it says initialize it successfully and that's what we care about. So one last time, we are going to close this and we're going to do a vehicle test again. First of all, we're gonna clear the error so we don't bump into things that we don't know why are there, but we just clear it all up and test the car again for errors. And here we go, clear. Now we have nothing, the, those, those two errors that you see there are nothing to do with this. It's just the battery on the ATM that it's discharged, I don't know. Well, anyway, so that's it. Now, the only thing left to do is just go outside and test if the triangles actually work. Okay, and this is how our cameras work. If we press the button here in the center console, now you can see that the cameras for the front bumpers are working. Obviously they are a little bit dirty, but now we can go and drive around the corners without bumping into other cars. Okay, we have a car in our blind spot and the triangles work. I can see it in the rearview mirror, but if I slow down a little bit and he left. Uh -huh. I didn't want to play. Okay, we'll find another one. Oh, 
cars. Nobody wants to play. Play with me. Play. Why is it that when you really want to try something, you need traffic, and for once in a lifetime, the streets of Montreal are like clear. <laughs> there's no traffic at all. <laughs> it's like 2 p.m. in the afternoon and there's no traffic whatsoever. What the hell? Okay, yeah, that ugly ass car is gonna be my, my mule. Come on, mule! our mirror and it's working are you serious no cars at all oh my god oh yeah yeah this is called Montreal Safari that wasn't too bad was it like it's done <laughs>